I want to give you five quick tips that will get you up to speed and make your experience with Forza Motorsport just that much better. For real, let's get straight into it. When you're presented with a selection of cars for a given cup, they're put across as if they're in the same class and any choice is valid depending on which car you prefer. But here's the thing, one of those cars is invariably faster than all the others and will make your run through the cup way easier. For instance, the introductory cup presents you with a Ford Mustang, Honda Civic and Subaru WRX. I picked the Ford Mustang for the lols and it was absolutely terrible. I was drifting everywhere, absolutely unable to put the power down. In a later cup, I chose the Porsche Cayman as it's known to be one of the best driver's cars in the world and absolutely smoked the AI. So what do you choose based on? Well, the first indicator is the car's PI level, which is the game's rough approximation of how powerful it is in contrast to others. The second is the model year. Newer cars will often come with better stock parts, above all, modern transmissions like PDKs. Simply having a car with a PDK versus traditional manual shifter will save you a ton of power loss between shifts. The game also allows you to rent cars in free play mode, which you can use to directly compare all of their times if you're super OCD about making the best choice every time. I can hear you moaning already, but hear me out. Getting your settings right here is crucial. Whether you're on a gamepad or a wheel, the game defaults to some rather barbaric dead zones. Get rid of these as much as possible to ensure you have a smooth range of motion. The stick dead zones on gamepad are especially aggressive. Go to the assist section and turn on the track limits markers. This will allow you to learn the in-game track limits for all of the game's circuits. So long as both inside wheels are inside these markers, you can cut the limits to your heart's content. You gain a lot of time per lap by flying over the curbs in Forza, so really make sure to lean into this. Feel free to disable them when you feel confident. Adjust the rest of these assists to your personal tastes, though if you want the best times, I would suggest turning off everything other than ABS. Use normal steering for gamepad and simulation steering for wheel. Speaking of simulation, I'd love it if you joined us as a subscriber to make sure you get notified of our upcoming wheel review. I've put the game's physics and handling under the spotlight in a way that simply wasn't possible in our general review here. This will let you know what to expect from Forza Motorsport as an enthusiast sim racer. Let's dig into the low-level car adjustments you can make for free lap time. Without a shadow of a doubt, the absolute easiest is to lower the amount of fuel load in your car before every race, to only as much as you need to complete all the laps. Forza is quite good at calculating this, but I'd leave one lap in reserve, just in case. Because you're dealing with largely stock road cars in the Builders' Cup, one of the most pervasive issues you'll encounter is understeer. As soon as you get the car's first few levels, make sure to unlock the race-grade rear anti-sway bar. If you stiffen this bar, you will make the car turn more. Balance the setting so that the car pivots and turns in, but doesn't drift every corner. You can complement this by adjusting the wheel camber after unlocking race grade suspension. More negative wheel camber gives the tyres a greater contact patch while turning. You can then adjust the wheel toe so that the rear tyres are pointing in while the front tyres point out. The race grade suspension will also allow you to lower the car, stiffen the springs and give it some rake, which is making the front lower than the rear. Not only will this improve car stability a ton, but it will also cause it to be more pointy on turn in. All of these changes together will be completely transformative to both car handling and lap times. Once again, a big issue with stock road cars, especially the older ones, is bizarre or too long gear ratios designed for grand touring through the canyons. Rather than jumping straight to horsepower upgrades, a really elegant way to maximize power and torque in Forza is to upgrade your transmission. If you get the race transmission, your old manual shifter will instead be replaced with what feels like a sequential transmission, limiting power loss between shifts substantially. On top of this, you'll be able to tune gear ratios on track to get them absolutely perfect for each scenario. The potential gains in lap time here are immense. When you can, augment this with a better flywheel and clutch so that the car can handle the additional torque running through the system. 
Due to the CarPG mechanic, changing tyre compounds is something that's locked off until you gain several levels on a given car. This will be one of the final upgrades you are given in most cups. The trick here is to unlock race tyres as soon as you can, which are basically slicks and race wets. Not only do slicks transform your car's handling substantially, but you can also use the format of Forza's single player races to your advantage. Because most cup races are only a few laps long, you can select soft compound slicks to absolutely obliterate your opponents. By the time the tyres begin to wear in any substantial way, the race will be finishing up. This makes slick tyres essentially a cheat code in most career mode races. And there we are, 5 tips to make your experience through Forza Motorsport much easier and more fun. If you enjoyed them, you're very welcome to join us as we release more Forza videos in the coming days. Until then.